This is part two of my drifting tutorial series, which can be applied to real-life drifting, Gran Turismo 7, or any other realistic simulator. If you want to learn everything about drifting, make sure you watch this whole series, starting from part one, which I've linked in the description. In this part, I will be explaining all the different techniques used to properly initiate a drift. These techniques are usually power over, handbrake, Scandinavian flick, braking, shift lock, lift off over steering, or any combination of these depending on the situation and what you feel more comfortable with. I will be using the 94S14 Sylvia Type S with the car setup presented in a previous video, which I've linked in the description. This setup makes it a great car to practice with. It handles very well and is balanced and very forgiving. It's also a bit underpowered intentionally, so you can focus on the other aspects of drifting instead of just power sliding. The easiest and best technique to start off with for beginners is the power over technique, which I've already explained in detail in part one of this tutorial, where we use this technique to initiate the drift throughout that exercise also catching and continuing the drift after reaching the desired drift angle is the same for all techniques and it was also explained in detail in part one i strongly advise you to watch part one and practice the given instructions intensively before proceeding with this part you can also start practicing that technique on an actual defined turn of a track instead of the big circle at willow springs Another variation of the power over technique is using the clutch kick to initiate the drift at corner entry. You simply approach the corner at a low speed. While turning in, you fully compress the clutch pedal. You rev your engine with the gas pedal and immediately release the clutch pedal while you're still on it. This will suddenly break the traction at the rear wheels and cause them to start spinning. The rear end will step out while accelerating through the corner, so you start counter steering or release the steering wheel to let it counter steer on its own if possible. You then catch it again at the desired angle and continue the drift. Everything related to continuing the drift is the same as I described in the part one video of this tutorial. Now let's watch it all again. Using the handbrake to initiate the drift is the second easiest technique. If you don't already have a handbrake that works with Gran Turismo 7, you can watch the video I made about my DIY handbrake, which I've linked in the description and at the end of this video. First, you brake before the corner to reduce the speed a bit while still carrying more speed than usual. You turn in at the corner entry and immediately hit the e-brake. The car will immediately start to go sideways, so you only keep the handbrake for a very short period. Then you release it while going back down on the throttle to continue the drift. You usually start counter steering right after you hit the handbrake, or you can release the steering wheel to let it counter steer by itself if that is possible. Similarly to the previous technique, you should catch the steering wheel when the car reaches the desired drift angle. Everything related to continuing the drift is the same as I described in the part one video of this tutorial. So, you head fast towards the corner while braking. To reduce the speed just enough but not too much, you turn in and hit the e-brake, then immediately release it and go back down on the throttle to keep it going, where you should then be adjusting your inputs to keep it steady like always. If you're driving a car with manual transmission, make sure you hit the clutch simultaneously and right before you hit the e-brake in order not to stall the engine. Then you also release the clutch right after you release the handbrake. At that moment, you can also slip the clutch after revving your engine, like in a clutch kick, if the car doesn't have enough torque at low RPM. This technique involves too many inputs and requires very good coordination. How hard you should step on the gas pedal should depend on your drift angle and how fast you are going. First, practice this technique while focusing on how long you should keep the handbrake and when exactly you should release it. Keep repeating the initiation while learning how the car is reacting to do it just right. You should get to a point where you know exactly when to release the e-brake 
and how hard to go back down on the throttle in order to have a smooth and nice looking drift. Everything from that moment on will be the same as continuing the drift in part one. Note that I'm using a different AI-generated voice than this one used in the previous videos as a way to improve your experience while watching my videos. Please, let me know if you find it better in the comments below. I use the 11 Labs tools to generate this voiceover. Please use the link provided in the description if you're interested. In the Scandinavian flick technique, you create weight shifting by swinging the car like a pendulum. You flick it at corner entry by approaching the corner close to the inside, steering away from the corner to the opposite side while accelerating, then suddenly steering back towards the direction of the corner while lifting off the throttle or even applying some slight braking. This sudden flick will shift the weight of the car and induce some exaggerated rotation, which will cause the back end of the car to step out and initiate the drift. You then start counter steering, then get back gently on the throttle to continue the drift, similarly to all the other techniques. So let's say you're approaching a right-hander. You start from the inside and steer left while accelerating. When you reach the outside, you turn right and back off the throttle while possibly applying some slight braking if the weight shift wasn't severe enough. The car will start oversteering, so you start counter-steering at that moment and release the brake pedal if applied. Then you gently get back down on the gas and continue the drift like usual. You can also produce a double swing, which will look cool, by starting at the outside, turning towards the inside, and flick it back to induce a smaller slide in the opposite direction of the corner, then flick it again towards the direction of the corner to induce a slide with a bigger angle. This technique is good practice before starting to learn transitions, which will be the subject of one of the coming parts of this tutorial series. So in the case of this right-hander, you start at the outside and you steer right towards the inside while accelerating. You then turn left and back off the throttle. You may need to blip the throttle again to help it oversteer. Then you start counter steering to the right while your foot is off the gas pedal. You wait for it to swing back and face the inside and start counter steering to the left, right when it starts changing direction and get back on the throttle at the right moment to continue the drift. Both the braking technique and the shift lock technique are good to use in combination with other techniques. They're very helpful in combination with the Scandinavian flick technique. The braking technique relies on sudden weight shifting to the front end of the car, maximizing the grip at the front and reducing the grip at the rear. It's similar to trail braking when grip racing but more sudden to upset the balance of the car. It's very crucial how you brake when using this technique. You should brake smoothly while also keeping enough speed for corner entry. If you reduce your speed too much, you won't have enough momentum to throw it sideways. Also, if you brake too hard, the front tires will lose grip and slide, causing understeering. If you brake too lightly, you won't induce the drift. You should brake just enough while still carrying enough speed. There is a threshold when applying pressure to the brake pedal at which the grip at the front tires is maximized and where the nose of the car becomes most responsive. Above that threshold, you start inducing understeering. The maximized grip at the front tires with the reduced grip at the rear will cause the rear end of the car to step out. The speed carried out at corner entry will make you reach your desired drift angle in order to be able to continue the drift using the gas pedal. This also depends on the brake balance of the car. I usually set the brake balance to 2 to the front for most FR road cars. I will be explaining this part in detail, along with the other setup-related tricks in another video of this series. I will also be explaining everything about the right use of the brake pedal in detail in another video. To use the braking technique with the Scandinavian flick technique and make a double swing entry, you head fast towards the corner from the outside and before reaching the corner, you suddenly turn in while braking to reduce the speed just enough but not too much. The rear end will step out because of your speed and the weight shifted to the front, so you counter steer and release the brake pedal to catch it, then brake again suddenly but smoothly to throw it to the other side. This will also amplify the drift a bit. You start counter steering to the opposite side and release the brake pedal or reduce the pressure a bit to catch it, then brake again suddenly and smoothly to switch sides one last time with your drift amplified some little more. The car will again switch direction, so you start counter steering again, release the brake pedal, and go back down on the gas at the proper moment to continue the drift as usual. Let's watch it all again.
The shift lock technique is very similar to the handbrake technique, but relies on locking the rear wheels using downshifting without rev matching. This technique can only be performed using a car with manual transmission. It's very useful on wet surfaces, but can also be used on dry surfaces in combination with some of the other techniques. When heading towards the corner, you use a higher gear than the one you will drift with. On corner entry and while turning, you quickly downshift and release the clutch without rev matching. This will cause the real wheels to suddenly lock and throw the rear end out. As in this example, the shift lock technique is very useful in combination with the braking technique and the Scandinavian flick technique. There are so many ways to do it, but let's have a look at this particular case. Starting from the outside, I turned towards the inside, and when I reached the inside, I turned away to flick it, downshifted, and released the clutch without rev matching. The rear end of the car stepped out, so I started counter-steering to catch it and helped it with the brake pedal to extend the slide a bit. The car suddenly gripped which threw the rear end to the opposite side, so I started counter-steering again to catch it, and when it reached my desired drift angle, I stepped back on the gas to continue the drift as usual. In this second example, I did a double swing and used the shift lock technique twice during the initiation. Starting from the outside, I turned in while braking and downshifted from fourth to third gear, always without rev matching. The rear end stepped out so I started counter steering to catch it and smoothly blipped the brake pedal to flip it to the other side. The car reacted accordingly so I started counter steering to catch it again, smoothly blipped the brake pedal again while downshifting to second without rev matching. The car immediately switched direction so I started counter steering to catch it and when it reached my desired drift angle, I stepped back on the gas to continue the drift as usual. If you suddenly lift your foot off the throttle pedal, the weight of the car will be shifted to the front, maximizing the grip at the front and reducing the grip at the rear. So similarly to the braking technique, the lift-off technique takes advantage of this weight shift to the front to make the rear end of the car step out. This method is good when used in combination with other techniques. In this example, I use the lift-off technique with the Scandinavian flick technique to make the first half of a double swing entry. I headed fast towards the corner from the outside, and before reaching the corner, I suddenly turned in while quickly lifting my foot off the throttle pedal. The rear end of the car stepped out just slightly and briefly, so I quickly turned to the opposite side to flick it and amplify the slide in the opposite direction, always while keeping my foot off the throttle pedal. The car quickly reacted accordingly, so I immediately started counter-steering to catch it. I then hit the brakes to slow down and flip it to the other side, and right when the car started bouncing back, I downshifted without rev matching to amplify the drift some more. I also immediately started counter-steering again to catch it and continue the drift with the gas pedal. Now let's watch it all again. Once you master all these techniques, you can combine any of them together, depending on the situation and your preference. You'll be trained enough to be able to judge each moment throughout the drift instantaneously and determine what's the best way to react to it or even anticipate it. Some few last tips would be to never turn any assists on, as they will ruin your control over the car. You can only use ABS as I do. You can use tires with less grip as a start if you want, but these would be much slower and easier, so you need to switch to the default tires of the car at some point to properly learn how to control it. To have the most realistic possible physics, go to event settings and input these values. You can repeat these exercises with more powerful cars once you get very good at drifting this one. You'll be able to watch my DIY handbrake video here and part three of the drifting tutorial here. I hope the information in this video was valuable to you. If you have any further questions or feedback, don't hesitate to leave a comment below. Thanks for watching. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button to stay updated on my latest tutorials and action-packed videos.